Hey guys, um, we're going to talk about the additive wax process right now and there's a lot of different things that you can use. I've got some wax wires over here. I've got um, pink sheet wax. There is also um, some blue, this is a blue block wax that you can use. Um, and you can also do this onto rings if you wanted to. So for this next assignment, you can actually add lots of different, you could make lots of different things. You could make earrings, you could make a pendant, you can make a ring or some other type of sculptural pendant. So for example, this is a pendant that the person took an alcohol lamp and they molded a piece of wax just by heating the wax in an alcohol lamp. And then once you have the piece of wax heated enough, you should be able to mold the piece of wax with your fingers. You are gonna actually see fingerprints in here. Um, and it is kind of difficult to, uh, difficult slash almost impossible to file and sand the pink wax. So if that's the wax that you use, you can try to make them smooth by holding them over the flame but it's almost impossible. It's actually a little bit easier to file fingerprints out of the wax when it is in the cast form like this, um, just for the pink wax. So um, there's a variety of different things that you can do. The first thing I'm gonna talk about, like obviously I already talked about how you can add it to a ring. So if you wanted to do something similar to what you did before, but add something that would work. Um, we have this block wax here and I've got a um, piece right here. This is supposed to look like a Chinese dragon. Hopefully you guys can see that if I hold it up against here. Hopefully you can see that looks like a Chinese dragon. What the individual did is they took a silver Sharpie and then they drew on a piece of black wax and cut out with the wax saw blades and a jeweler saw until they got this shape and then obviously you'd have to go back in here and file this until it's more rounded because the whole really cool part of lost wax casting is that you can get something that's three-dimensional and has form and substance and a roundness to it because you can file or sand it into shape or of course you can do a couple of other things so this piece that's right here was actually made with a piece of the uh, um, the piece right here was actually made with a piece of this round ring wax and then the person added extra pieces to it and this particular wax wire is a little bit smaller but they added a wax wire and then they, they took this pink sheet wax and cut out little petals similar to how this is. If you think about what a petal shape looks like, I'm just going to take my ultra fine sharpie and i'm going to draw the petal shape so a petal kind of looks like this and what that person did is they drew that onto their sheet wax so right now i've got my piece of sheet wax underneath or actually the sheet wax is on top of my uh, drawing then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take an exacto knife and i'm going to be really really careful and I'm going to cut out the petal shape that I traced. And you could actually, if your drawing skill maybe isn't as uh, strong, you could go and print an image off of Google or some other method that you have. Like maybe you've got some really cool picture in your phone. And then once you've printed it off, you can actually cut out the shapes that you have. So right now I'm taking my fingernail and where I didn't carve it as nicely with the X-Acto knife, I'm just taking my fingernail and I'm trimming this a bit. Then what I wanna do is, and I know this is really tiny, it's probably hard for you all to see, but I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bend it around something that can give it form. So when I take it off, it's similar to what this shape is. So you could make all different kinds of flowers if you wanted to that actually have a form. Later on getting into here uh, to sand and file is gonna be kind of difficult, but there are other patinas and things we can put on there so you don't have to file and sand every single part. 
Um, another thing that you can do with the sheet wax, so obviously I have um, a thicker piece of sheet wax here, and then what this individual did is they took another thinner part and they actually made like a cup that they were gonna fill with enamel. So you could, after you're done casting your piece, fill the piece with enamel, or you could um, do a um, cold connection piece there as well. Uh, another option is I've got, you know, another one of those pieces of sheet wax here, and I have uh, a bunch of drops of wax on this. Now, this was actually going to be something like a spoon ring. If you actually look at the shape of this, it almost looks like a spoon. Um, and this person was going to wrap it around their finger. Uh, they never actually ended up finishing it. And part of the reason is they got really frustrated because the wax kept coming off like that. But part of the reason that happened is they didn't attach the wax as well as they should have. So you can actually take the wires and I'm just going to get this wire hot and I'm going to drip one little drop of wax onto what I was working. So you can get all kinds of different shapes with the sheet wax. This piece right here, this is all the sheet wax and wax wire. So a wax wire went this direction, then they put a drop of wax here, they put another direction, and they kept repeating to have that nice pattern go in there. And the other really interesting, cool part about this is they took a Dremel tool and they went in and they gave this part texture and then they sanded these other parts and buffed them to give a texture versus a smooth section, which is really interesting as well. So I have a model of a horse here that actually was made with plasticine clay. And what you need to realize about plasticine clay, this was made like three years ago and the plasticine has oil in it. It's not like the clay from the ceramics class and it stays moldable for a lot longer, uh, if not indefinitely, depending on how you treat it. <coughs> uh, another thing is, this is another mold that was made out of plasticine. So if you take a look at this, this person used a dowel. Then what they did is they created that snake shape that they wanted to make a ring out of. And then they actually took a tool, uh, whether it was one of the wax carving tools or maybe a um, pen tip, and they went in there and they did a whole bunch of texture on this snake. This person did actually cast this later on as well. So again, these models in plasticine will not burn out of the flasks. So you actually have to make this in wax as well, but this gives you an idea rather than you know creating a sketch that might be flat, this gives you a way of making your model three-dimensionally before you actually start with the wax. But again, this will not burn out of the flask, so you have to make your model in wax. Uh, here's another example of a piece that was in wax. This person tried to make a paper swan and you can see they were actually going to cast it but they didn't like this version. Uh, so they made it again. They just took the sheet wax in order to do that and then they actually folded the sheet wax and they took a really skinny piece that was a lot thinner than this. Uh, another thing that I need to mention, so the sheet wax, this is 18 gauge. It actually goes down to, I think, 24 gauge is the smallest we have, and we have as thick as 8 gauge. 8 gauge um, wires and sheets are pretty thick, so 8 gauge would be this thick as a sheet. So if you take a look at this one that's 18, you can see that 8 gauge is a lot thicker, even though this is wire the sheet would be as thick as this wire, if that makes sense, because the gauge always stays the same. Uh, so you have to think about like all these things. How thick do I want my piece? Am I gonna be dripping things on? Am I cutting things out? Uh, this piece right here, you can see they actually took probably a piece of, and it was a ring, but it obviously broke. Um, they took sheet wax and they added cut out pieces of sheet wax to the surface of this ring. Here's another, here are two more examples of pendants that people cut out. Um, obviously this one looks a little humanoid and you could make like the last letter of your name and you could do some really interesting designs in here. This one's not you know, as interesting, but obviously it got left here. So the person wasn't as interested in making it either. Uh, another thing that you could do just to give you lots of different ideas here is um, this one says a Miami Heat. The I, 
I would maybe stay away from doing letters that are really tiny. And part of the reason for that is if you look at where it says Miami Heat, the letters are really intricate and they're very hard to do. It does not mean that you couldn't do the mat basketball and the net and the flames. But again, depending on your skill level, you want to make sure that your craftsmanship skills are and that your hand skills are fine enough that you can get all those little details. So it kind of depends on uh, how fine your craftsmanship is, whether or not you could do something like that. So I've got different sheet wax and uh, wires, but we also have this really great bag of uh, scraps. Now I know it looks like, yeah, these are somebody else's leftovers, but the nice cool thing about this is if you're melting something anyway, it doesn't really matter how big the piece is, especially if you're using the different wax tools to add different things to something. Uh, one other thing I wanna mention is that it is a prohibited for you to use the sprue wax. Uh, this is yellow sprue wax and the pink sprue wax. And part of the reason for that is that we need to make sure that we have enough of those pieces to actually put on your pieces when we're casting. So you cannot use the pink sprue wax. There are the same size wax wires in the green stuff. We'll just have to actually go in the cabinets and grab that. So just a little bit ago, I cut a piece out of this sheet wax with an X-Acto knife. You could do the same thing with any of the wax tools. I can actually, um, I'm not actually cutting all the way through. I could make a design that I wanna um, embed or create as a texture inside my wax. So here I'm actually, I'm not actually cutting through the whole wax, I'm just actually engraving into it. So if you wanted something to stay, you could engrave with the tool. Uh, you can of course heat any of these tools up to either take wax, like for example, if I heat this up, I can, and I have to wait a little bit till it gets um, molten enough, but I can actually drip with my tools or I could take and I could almost like paint. Um, and then you gotta be careful because as soon as the wax gets solidified enough, here I'm painting kind of what looks like this really weird sun sort of onto my piece while well, it looks more like an amoeba right now. Um, but I could actually, you know, take wax from anywhere, whether it's on the alcohol lamp or from my scrap bin, or I can take my wires, like I had mentioned before, of dripping things on here. Um, if you're going to put a piece of wire on something, sort of like what happened on this curved area, uh, it's important to bend the wire first, and then you're going to actually have to take a tool and get the tool hot and go over the top of the tool and melt it on. You could also take pieces of wax wire and seal what was going on there. Now I just did one tiny little area, but imagine I'm sealing or it's almost like welding with uh, wax. So you're taking the wax and going along that entire seam to make sure that it's solidified completely. I'm not going to take the time to do that, but you could actually do that on a piece as well. So another thing you can do is you can actually, there's some of these carving tools in the containers for wax. I can actually take this and carve along the edge and some of the reason that this isn't carving as nicely for me is there's a lot of wax on here so i'm going to actually melt most of it off and i'm just going to kind of tap it on the alcohol lamp and then i'm going to cool it off so that i hopefully don't um, burn myself but i can actually take this tool and I can carve, whether it's just carving, like one part of this, I carved just a tiny, like I carved the 90 degree angle off of this piece of wax. And the other thing I did was I carved into it. So if I wanted to make something that looked like scales or maybe feathers, I could take these tools and I could carve into the wax, the different thing that I wanted it to look like. So you guys already know that there's like the carving tools and wax files and the different dental tools over here. But one thing that we need to talk about is inside this cabinet, there is more black wax. There's also all the different gauges of sheet metal. Uh, not metal, excuse me. There's all the different gauges of sheet wax. So here's 22, 
but there is a 24 over here. I have 18. I even have up to 14 gauge sheet wax and there's all kinds of wax wires way in the corner that you can use as well. Another thing that you need to be aware of, and this is prohibited as well. Right now I have uh, what actually is part of a horse. If you notice that model that I showed you earlier, it was a lot smaller than what the individual actually made in metal. And technically she carved it out of wax first and it was going to be screwed this direction. But if you'll notice, it was all the way to the top of the flask and you cannot do that. So you, can't, you are limited by the size of the flask because again, your model has to be one quarter of an inch to a half of an inch below the top surface because otherwise the cast runs the risk of blowing out the back side where you filled it with plaster. So again, you're limited to size because we only have certain size flasks here. 